Hello everyone, it is time for another bookshelf tour video. This is the first one of 2019. So today I'm going to be carrying on with this shelf here. I'll link down part one and part two where I did the top shelf and then I did half of the middle shelf. So we're going to do the rest of this shelf and then we are going to do the bottom shelf. And this shelf you never see in videos. <laughs> so you'll see what kind of books I keep down there. This is going to be a really long video so I'm just going to get straight into it. So here we are in the shelf. I have here my Christmas cactus, which I'll move out the way. And I got up to about here last time, so I'm just gonna carry on. I have, let's start at the top here. So let's take these down. Everything is getting like double stacked now because it's too much. And I've read all these books here that I'm gonna talk about. So I have The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. Love this. This is a fa feminist retelling of fairy tales and it's just so good. I love it so, so much. And I waited so long to read this because I didn't know if I'd like it or not because I'm not a massive fairy tale fan, but I adore it. I have my first ever book club book for my own book club that I run, and this is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. I have Lord of the Flies by William Golding, which I really liked, and I love this cover. I have Philip Pullman's The Book of Dust. Absolutely adored this book. This is a fairly new book, but it reads like kind of Dickens-esque era. I absolutely adore it. I then have all of the Worst Witch series. So these are the ones that I've read so far. I didn't read as a child, so it's nice to like experience these now because I watched the TV show. So I have read this many so far and I really enjoy them. I love the characters. It's a children's book series about this witch who is absolutely hopeless and I adore her and love her and so and, and she came out before Harry Potter. Let me say that now. So, just going to move those over the side. This was my favourite book of last year, I think, or the year before. It might have been the year before. And this is Evening Primrose, and this is such a good book. It's incredible. I've done so many videos on this. <laughs> and it's a short book, but it's so good. I would highly recommend this. Don't read any kind of spoilers about it, though. Just read the book, because it's really amazing. Oh, this was a really good book as well. Let's get some books out. So... I have Paris My Sweet, which is a non-fiction book, and it's about the author of this, Amy Thomas. She got a job in Paris, and she's from America, and she's really into sweet treats. So she runs a blog um, in America that's all about the best places to get, like, cake and different stuff. And then she gets this dream job in Paris and starts writing about Paris and the best places in Paris and it's just so lovely and I from the cover I kind of wasn't sure if I was going to adore it or not but I absolutely did because she talks about life and then she talks about real life tea shops that you can go to so in the back of it they'll have a list of all the different tea shops as you can see that you can go to and all the ones in America that she mentions and all the ones in gorgeous Paris and then she goes into the history of those shops so who first started them and a bit of history about the cakes and then it flits back into her life and being an American in Paris it's so good I absolutely adored this book I then have The Bears on Hemlock Mountain, which is an old children's story. And this is by Alice Denglish. And this is really good. This is about a boy who has to go over Hemlock Mountain to go and visit a family member. But there are bears on Hemlock Mountain. And will he make it? And there's so much peril in this for a children's book. It's a bit much, but I loved it. This is Love and Misadventures by Lang Leave. And I feel like the longer I have this book, the more I love this book book because I read it quite a few years ago and I remember really liking it it's a poetry collection you can see I've like tabbed ones that I love so there's loads of different poems and then at the end at the beginning of chapters sometimes you have a picture like there and when I first got it I loved it but I feel like as I've like grown older and aged I love it even more there's so much relevance to the stories I adore it so let's keep going I'm going to move you down a little bit so you can see the books so after Love and Misadventure, which I absolutely love, we have uh, Henrik Ibsen's very famous play, The D a Doll's House, which is so good. And it's about a man and woman. It's really about gender roles within a marriage. But the man thinks he's completely in control of everything. Yet the woman is in control of all the finances behind her husband's back because her husband's lost loads of money. And he thinks he's doing so well. And it's really, it's, it's comedy, but it's sad at the same time because her husband doesn't want her to think that she's in control of the money and if he found out he'd be horrified that his wife was actually taking care of their finances whereas she 
doesn't really have that ego within it she's just like we just have to get by and it's so good it's so complex absolutely fantastic i then have a poetry collection an african eulogy by ben okri absolutely adored this this actually made me cry i just found this so touching stunning it's the winner of the 1991 booker prize absolutely adored it this wasn't the winner of the book prize but he has won the man book prize just saying that there but this collection oh stunning i then have cartwheel by jennifer dubos which really is about the manda knox case so if you don't know mad knox is um well she was a student an american student who went to go and study in italy and then she met a girl called meredith kircher who was an english girl over studying in italy Meredith ended up being murdered. This is a true life case. Meredith was murdered and Mad Knox was found guilty for her murder. And then Mad Knox was later like all charges were dropped. That was it. She was found innocent. But a lot of people do think that Mad Knox maybe did it. And this is very much about the time when it was a massive in the media, huge media thing and it's really about that time so the initial after the murder i thought this was really interesting i thought it was interesting so it's called cartwheel because a man knox famously did a cartwheel in the interrogation room which was very bizarre and had a lot of very odd behavior and i found this book interesting because there were so many facts that added up that the book says it's not based on the mad knox case but it is there's a secret. <laughs> it definitely is. I then have, oh, look how many tabs I've got on this. I love it. This is Mary Shelley Frankenstein. This is the book that got me into reading. I wasn't into reading because I didn't know I had dyslexia. For, throughout my childhood, I was in bottom set for maths and English and I just couldn't get why I just thought I wasn't very smart and it used to really get me down. And then for GCSE, we had to do Frankenstein and I remember reading this book and loving it and I really struggled with it because at the time I had dyslexia so I hadn't got any kind of like coping mechanisms like I have now with reading but I just loved the story and I fell in love with it and so that made me think oh maybe I'll pick up more books I love this this is one of my favorite books it's so meaningful to me because it did get me into reading which reading is very much my life now. I have a sprinkling of lesbian short stories by Q Kelly. This is exactly what it is. It's lesbian short stories and it's so good and so funny and it's so it's so weird. Like some of them are like magical and others are more like humanistic. It's just really good. You have to get it. It's very fantastic. And there's one in this where um two women are debating one of them is a republican and one of them's a democrat and they fall in love this spell gets cast on them and they fall in love whilst they're debating and it's so good i then have a jacqueline wilson i used to read jacqueline wilson when i first got into reading so after i read frankenstein i read jacqueline wilson and a little bit of time before that i used to read jacqueline wilson she deals with very heavy subjects so she her writing isn't too difficult and that's why i could read it as a child because like i said i have to say i wasn't very good at reading but her writing deals with difficult subjects it's normally a girl is going for a really difficult really i mean really difficult time um and it's about that so candy floss is about a girl who her mom and dad have broken up and her dad used to run a calf and now he has a chip van and it's about her dad's very much struggling to look after her and he's not asking anyone for any kind of help and like her clothes smell and her like basic needs aren't being met but she loves her dad and it's all told from her point of view about her dad so they do get really serious and really deep suicide is in a lot of her books it's not in this one but in a lot of um jacqueline wilson there is suicide it's about children in care a lot of different things i then have so i could jacqueline wilson 100 percent recommend let me say that now i then have lone wolf by jodie pickle this is about a um, man who gets put in intensive care and his daughter wants to keep the machine going keep him alive even though he may be like brain dead when he comes out of it he may never wake up and his son wants to turn the machine off and says just let dad go but the son and the dad had a really difficult relationship so the daughter just thinks you just want to turn off his life support machine because you didn't get on with him really complex like issues dealt with in that oh this is so lovely raymond briggs ethel and ernest so raymond briggs famously wrote the snowman 
and many other great things as Father Christmas which I love as well that he wrote and this is about Roman Briggs actual parents Ethel and Ernest and about their life and it goes through the Second World War and it talks about that and it's just so good it's a graphic novel so let me show you it there we go I love the style absolutely gorgeous but there's a lot about the war in it that's really interesting I loved that I then have The God File by Frank Turner Holland this is about a man who is in prison for a crime he did not commit and he decides that he's going to create this file which is about does God exist or not and it's really sprinkled in stories of his own life why he's in prison for this crime he did not commit and uh, the whole situation but then also god does god exist it's so moving this book it really is stunning i absolutely love that i then have two graphic novels here but they're part of a series the series is amulet and i love amulet so it's about this girl gets an amulet which is this kind of necklace thing and someone wants the amulet and so throughout the book she's being chased by this person who wants the amulet i love it let me try and show you it clearly there we go I really, really do love the art style of this. And there's all these different characters that are helping her. And she's with her brother and her and her brother are going to try and get away. And oh, it's so good. I love the colour palette. It's just stunning. It's so magical as well. There's also a lot of humour within it. And then I have Amulet Book 2. It goes well on the series. I just need to get Book 3 and start reading it. I have Book 3 actually. I just haven't read it yet. Oh. I just love the colours within this, it's really beautiful and it's a beautiful story as well because it's her and her brother like trying to cope and survive, I really love Amulet and Amulet isn't the usual thing that I'd like but I adore it. I then have a graphic novel, Beautiful Darkness, one of the best graphic novels I have ever read. This is about all these little people, like fairy tale people, and they're all living inside of something and you can't work out what they're living inside of in the woods. And then gradually they've all got to survive by themselves in the woods. Oh, I don't want to give anything away. In the woods. And it's all about all the terrible things that happen to these little magical creatures. So it starts off really nice and light and bright and then gets incredibly dark. But I loved this. I really did adore it. And this blonde character really follows her. It really is. I mean, it's beautifully illustrated. Let me try and show you an illustration, but I don't want to spoil the plot or anything. There we go. Stunning. I mean, look at that. Gorgeous watercolours. Really, really beautiful. And again, incredibly moving though. When you work out the whole really basis of the plot of that, that made me cry. That was really moving. So, let's slide this back on over. And now we're going to go to the bottom shelf, the shelf underneath this. This is the bottom shelf that you don't get to see. So we've got loads of kind of like children's books here that I'll show you. And then just give you a quick overview. It's really stuffed full of as many books as I can get in and some books that I hate are here at the bottom as well. So let's start over this side and look at the children's books. I'm actually holding the camera so I'm sorry if it's a little bit shaky. So we have Hans Christian Andersen, 14 famous fairy tales. So I'll show you this book. It's heavily illustrated, gorgeous, beautiful illustrations within that one put that over there we then have Angelina's Halloween this is Angelina Ballerina who's like a mouse who's a ballerina <laughs> it's really odd but this is a gorgeous children's book if you have little children this is just stunning or if you yourself are very into Halloween I'd say this is stunning as well the artwork within it oh absolutely beautiful love that story it's about Angelina is not being a team player and you should be a team player and look after your siblings then have this book that I actually got when I was in France and I got it from a Vide Grenier which is similar to UK boot sales and it's just a book on Paris landmarks and it's stunning, I absolutely love that. I have Shirley Hughes Autumn which is all about autumnal things which again if you have little kids it's gorgeous. I have a Quentin Blake picture book and this was written by Clarendon Bake and illustrated by Quentin Blake and it is so good. It's about Miss Armitage, Queen of the Road. She gets given a car by her uncle and she's not a very good driver and so slowly things start falling off the car and it's just lovely. The illustrations are beautiful within it. I really loved, 
I loved this book so much. Gorgeous. I have Roald Dahl's James and the Giant Peach. This is my favourite Roald Dahl book. And I collect books because I love Quentin Blake. So anything he illustrates, I collect. Not a huge Roald Dahl fan, but I do think this is Roald Dahl's best book. It's just stunning. It's about a boy called James. He lives with these two nasty women. And then one day, there's this giant peach growing. And he kind of wishes upon the peach. And then the bugs that are inside the peach come to life as well. And it's about like love and friendship. And it's just gorgeous. I absolutely think it's stunning. Oh, I mean, look at those illustrations. And all the bugs are lovely as well. And I love in it the spiders singing. And she's like, if you see me in the nursery, don't be scared, children. It's just lovely. I then have a Garfield, so Garfield is like a really old comic, but now it's been turned into these volumes and I absolutely adore it. So there, it's just a story of this cat called Garfield who's really lazy and he loves lasagna <laughs> and it's just really funny. I love it. So this is Garfield volume three and it's really good. I then have The Hedgehog Feast by Edith Holden. Edith Holden wrote um, A Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady, which is her diary talking about the changing of the seasons, and it's gorgeous. But she, for her job, actually illustrated children's books. And she was a naturalist as well, so she worked as that. But this is just savage. Really! <laughs> really savage. And this is The Words are by Rowena Scott. And this is a hedgehog feast and it's just i don't know if it means rowena wrote it or not i'm not entirely sure with the situation on this i mean look there we go they're killing each other lovely it's all about animals trying to eat so the hedgehogs they're getting some apples lovely but other animals are just killing other animals and it's like you know time for something to eat and it's just a bit savage but it's gorgeous illustrations oh i love look at that squirrel the illustrations are gorgeous and then they all have a lovely feast together in the end lovely but i don't know if i show it to a children because it's a bit savage that is from my diary of frida carlo i took the dust jacket off it i then have paddington at the tower paddington bear visiting the tower of london it's really lovely I have Miss Marvel, Marvel, which I love. I read this and I adored it. And it's about this girl who, she's from a Muslim family and she's also a superhero and I love it. I loved it so much, but I didn't read on in it. So I need to buy it and read on. I find them really expensive to buy these like volumes, but I did love it. So I will read on with that. I then have, oh, here's a comic. Oh, Miss Marvel comic. Cause I was trying to get them individual, but now I'm completely out of sync. So up here we have some clutter. We have Louise O'Neill asking for it. I really didn't enjoy that book very much. We have Heat by Sally Emerson, which I adored. It's about a woman who she has started a new life and she's got a husband and children and then her ex-boyfriend turns up in her new life and she's really frightened of him and so that gradually tells you why she's frightened of him i tabbed bits that were just stunning within it i loved it i then here is just like notes and clutter there so to go back into it i have the Midas Flesh Volume 1, really loved that graphic novel. Keeping Up Appearances, this is like a companion book. So Keeping Up Appearances was a UK show. And it's about this woman called Hyacinth, who's really like snobby, and I absolutely adore it. And then this was a book that came out, it's like a book that Hyacinth's written, if you know what I mean. Loved that book. I then have, oh, Trisha Paytas, YouTube Zone. This is The Stripper Diaries. Trisha Paytas is a American YouTuber, but she, in real life, also used to be a stripper. And this is what she wrote about her time stripping. And it's really interesting, and it's really moving, and it's really brutal. Let me say that first. But um, I found that really interesting. And it's just her diary of being a stripper, like the day-to-day -day of it, really moving, I found. The History of the Tale of Peter Rabbit. This is the letters corresponding between Beatrix Potter and her publisher of Peter Rabbit. And it's interesting because it's all the stuff they wanted her to change in Peter Rabbit. I then have Ice Haven by Daniel Close. Daniel Close also did um, Ghost, Ghost World. And I love Ghost World. It's a graphic novel and this is about 
loads of weird people really a boy goes missing and then it's about all the people in the neighborhood very very good but it's it's really not about the missing boy it's just about loads of different people i have this book which i actually got from a church sale so this church was doing like a jumble sale and i got this which is the most unchurch like book in the world it's the illustrated wine speak and it is a funny book about people trying different wines so there you go it's a lot of naked ladies breasts on bottles and it's different people but if they were um wine critiques so like wine critiques someone might say it's a little sullen and then they'll draw the person as a little sullen and so it's really making fun of wine critiques really and people try and critique wine move that away I then have a film script. This is Quentin Tarantino, Natural Born Killers. I really love the film Natural Born Killers. So the script was good as well. I have Hellbound Lifestyle, which I love. It's just a satirical take on a woman in her kind of early 30s. I really enjoy it. But it's a series of short stories. I then have The Love Factory by Elaine Proctor. This is about a woman who starts her own erotic fiction really short story anthology but the short story anthology is made from loads of different people in her life this is fiction the book the whole book is fiction but it's about this woman trying to make this erotic fiction book because she tried to write other books and they haven't worked out for her i really liked it i really liked the thing of like female friendship within this oh my god everything's like slithering about I then have Agatha Christie secret notebooks. These are the notebooks of Agatha Christie. So in them are the in sections of the books. So you'll have a book like Halloween Party and then all her notes she wrote on that. Really loved that. We have Ruth Rendell Heartstones, which this is a novella and it is so good. I absolutely loved it. Let me zoom you in a little bit. I love the cover as well. It's so creepy. And it's about a girl who her mum's died and she really has this weird relationship with her dad where she doesn't want anyone to be near her dad at all. So her dad meets this other woman and then it, the other woman ends up dying very dramatically. She, she dies and it's considered an accident but you're kind of thinking, did the little girl kill her? What happened there? Really great. I love it. It's about the psyche of like grief as well. Really love that. We then have, if everything would chill out for a second, we have, oh my lord, I got this from um, someone I pen pal with, it's lovely, her name's Sylvia, I love it, beautiful. Uh, we have the Critsita Sonata by Leo Tolstoy, and this is about a man who's on a train, and he's telling someone on a train how he killed his wife. It's really good. I really did like it. Uh, we have Raspberries on the Yancey by Karen Wallace, which is really just about childhood, and I found it quite boring, to be perfectly honest. We then have Teen Dog, which is a comic book series, and I really liked it by Jane Lor Jake Lawrence. I thought it was really good. I then have this other like comic, which wasn't very good. <laughs> Slither that back in. And then, let's see what we've got here. We have Ghosting by Kenneth Gray. It's like a short story horror. I enjoyed that. The Long Weekend by Kavita Calhan. This is kind of like a thriller, a short story thriller. Really enjoyed that. We then have The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boys and Other Stories by Tim Burton. And it's just a short story collection, but the short stories are really short in it. So that's like short short stories with illustrations but i really did enjoy that i thought that was nice we then have helen sloan's diary by jeff lucas and this is about a woman who she's it, it's a christian book really it's about like faith and stuff um and it was actually published by a christian publishers and it's about she's in kind of this love triangle i didn't think it was very good to be honest with you i didn't really feel like it said a lot we then if we these books will control themselves have kiss me kill me which is a thriller i did enjoy that <laughs> we have unspeakable by abby rushton some secrets are too dangerous to be told this is a why book and i feel like it had a lot of heart to it i did enjoy that it was quite a lovely story and this girl's kind of struggling with her sexuality in it as well 
we have the village that was drowned by Phyllis Flower Drew and this is a look at the lovely illustration this is a um, you know old children's story and it really is about a village that drowned but it's really brutal like the animals are drowning and they're dying and the little boy's like oh my god the animals are all gonna die it really I thought it was good, I thought it was really good, but it was a very brutal read. This is Speak No Evil, it was actually my favourite book of last year. It's about a boy who he has Nigerian parents and he lives in Washington in America and it's about race and it's also about he is gay and his parents find out and they're absolutely devastated by this and they take him back to Nigeria to kind of turn him straight. It's a really fantastic book, really interesting. We have Brood, let's get these two. So Brood by Chase Novak. This is a horror. This was really good, but don't like get spoiled for it. There's so many spoilers out there. We have Lost Property by uh, Andy Polagandi. And this is about a man goes into a shop and it's full of all his lost property. All the things that he once owned that are, that are lost, were lost within his life. There's the art style. I don't love the art style. I didn't really love the story. There was background to all the things that he'd lost. So it was taking you through his life through his lost items and it sounded like a really amazing plot but I just didn't really enjoy it that much then spin you around a little bit we got the diary of Frida Kahlo this is Frida Kahlo's actual diary and journal and it is so good so there'll be writing and then there's different illustrations there's loads of different stuff and obviously she never meant for this to be out there to be published so a lot of it doesn't really make sense when you read it but at the back of the book it has a print of each page and then a small paragraph saying what she could have meant so at the time she was going through surgery so that's why she was talking about desperation and at the time her and Diego had got back together so that's what Diego was her husband that's why she was talking about different stuff I really loved this thought this was gorgeous then have, let's pull these out, oh, I really liked this actually, Roll Doll's SEO Trot and this is about a man um, really starting a relationship with the woman who lives above him uh, but through a tortoise, it's really good, it's really like bizarre but very good, let me show you some of the illustrations. I did enjoy that, I thought that was nice. We have The Wizard of Oz, but this is a play version of The Wizard of Oz, which I really liked. We then have 12, which I hated, I know people love. It's by Nick McDonnell, and oh God. <laughs> How to describe this book, it's really about drugs but it's just, uh, it's about like privileged kids taking drugs and different things but I just didn't like it at all, I didn't like the writing, I didn't like the plot. I then have Avian High by Meg Cabot, uh, this is a book series Avian High but this is one of them that was turned into a manga and I haven't read any of the series, I just picked this up in a charity shop and I really liked the manga of it. I'm going to end the video here because we still have loads more books on this shelf to get to so I'm going to end this video here and part 4, the next part will be up very soon so here is all the aftermath of all these books I hope you enjoyed this part and I'll see you again soon for another video